Let's start. Yeah. Well, my name is Farhan, um, and I'm going to talk to you about some things uh, about Hadoop and Yarn. First of all, I would like to ask you just to raise your hand if it's, it's, it's if you have. Uh, have you ever read something about Hadoop? Raise your hand. Okay, it's plenty. Many people. Uh, how many of you uh, have you ever tried something like doing an example? Yeah, you, you have. And uh, the ones uh, that you raise your hand, how much of you have? Do you, do you have actually uh, something in production? One, two, Ike, you have. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Okay. So um, I'm. That's my Twitter account. If you want to follow me and connect me, uh, to to be in touch. I'm an engineer raised here at this very university, and since several years ago, I I joined the company called Trovic, uh, where I could learn many things about how to big data and these kind of things. That and that's why I'm I'm going to share something of my, some things of my knowledge with you. I'm gonna tell you a story about data. I'll just put an introduction. Um, today we're like. Uh, crazy buying sensors, connecting them to, to machines, uh, sending this uh, data to the internet. Everyone, every one of you have uh, uh, smartphones, and even if you don't want, uh, um, in the end we are users producing a behavior. Uh, some other companies, some apps, and some uh, services you are using. Uh, for instance, social networks. Um, all that produces data. This data can be text, numbers, um, you can upload images, videos. But the important thing uh, is uh, how much data we're producing. That uh, graphic it, it explains a bit what's happening in the internet in, in one minute. It, it happens many things. <laughs> but um, the important thing is uh, how, how much data, how, many, how much data. Um, here it says that uh, all digital data created uh, reached four zettabytes in 2013. Right now, I think we are like eight zettabytes. It's a lot. I don't know. I don't even know how. how it's the exponential of that. Um, and even it's not not only that, but uh, we're like keeping history and storing many, many, many things. Uh, so this kind of uh, problems is these kind of challenges are called big data and you probably know that. Um, what's the main problem of a big data? Well, how, how it appeared, how it became a trend uh, and a known topic? Well, um, since uh, machines has become more powerful uh, the last year as well, we can say that we have powerful, powerful machines, powerful C CPUs, fast memories, uh, our hard disks uh, store quite huge amount of, amount of data. Um, but what happens about disks? Well, um, since yeah, they, they have huge capacity, but their uh, their write and read speed, it's quite slow. If you want to, to read a hard disk, for instance, of two terabytes from the beginning to the end, it will take you about three and, four hour, three and a half hours. And well, that's quite a lot of, of time, I don't know. Want to think what what will it cost to to read a zettabyte? But well, um, how do we solve that? Well, we just buy more hard disks. We put data according to distribution, and uh, we can without uh, with the technology we have, we can just spend uh, a sixth of the time we were using we were spending before. So we read, we read this, this data faster. Um, we did that uh, distributing, distributing our hard, hard disks. That's why companies like Google uh, build this kind of, this kind of infrastructure. Uh, they are about uh, computers connecting one to, to, to the other and uh, storing data uh, in a distributed way and they would process this data also in a distributed way, uh, so, so to satisfy uh, its business needs. 
um, the more and more uh, uh, other companies had had become to have the same needs. So uh, that's why this uh, kind of distributed send systems has become well a big trend. A big trend is quite mainstream, um, and that's mainly about this technology here that you, many of you know is Hadoop. Um, it's about um, an open source uh, framework based on what Google has been doing for uh, for years, and um, what it does is it it's, it hides it, it hides to you the the complexity of distributed systems and it provides you a, an easy way to deal with them and make um, uh, make programs or make applications quite easily. Um, Hadoop has principal, principally two parts. Um, one is a, a, a distributed file system. So if you, have, if you have here all your nodes, we call them a cluster. Um, what would you put uh, on top of it is, is like a, um, a distributed file system. So, um, so it makes it, it makes uh, it, it will use all the all the slates, all the no nodes to store your data, uh, and in a tran and in a transparent way, you can put your files. And for instance, one file will be a part will be uh, um, will be stored here, and the other will be stored here, um, or the other, or, or another file will be stored in three different nodes, and it completely transparent to you. Um, for instance, you can you can do an LS. You can read what's what's inside. You can do an LS of a directory, and you can look what's inside of the directory. And you can even well use a cat to read the content of the directory. Normally, you won't, don't use that because it's made for storing huge files. So a cat will, will uh, shut your your command line interface. Um, on top of uh, HDFS, uh, there's a processing framework for the data you have stored in a distributed fashion. Um, that is called Hadoop MapReduce. Um, what it basically does is um, uh, giving you an API, a set of functions that you can program. Um, and you can um, execute uh, programs on the data you stored here in your nodes. Uh, you can do an application that it's just one job map reduce, we call it a map reduce, we call it a job. Uh, or you can do a, an application of uh, two or three map reduce jobs, as many of you want, and in a five, normally in a binary way that uh, one did get executed after the other. Uh, what happens inside the map reduce job? Well, basically, it reads a file. This file is splitted, and each part of this file uh, it executes. It executes uh, a uh, function called map that you can program. You can make your code here. Uh, it uh, produces a set of key values. And these key values uh, are, uh, are shuffled, partitioned, and grouped in, in groups of, of keys. And it, they, got, they get um, into another part that is the reduce. This reduce, it executes a function that you can code. And eventually, it will uh, write a file on disk. Um, as you can see, uh, you, here we have four maps. And we've chosen to have three reduces. We can choose the number of reduces of our job map reduce. Um, so each, each one of these boxes can be distributed and can be um, uh, executed on, on any machine uh, separately. So that's. It, it's, been, it's computed in a distributed way. Um, so, uh, if we have an application, we execute the job, we read a, read, read a file from HDFS, we process it, we execute map, reduce, we write it down, create another file, then if you want to execute another job, you read your file again, you execute your job, and you write it down again to HDFS. Um, underneath, how, how does it work, uh, MapReduce? Well, um, it's, it's made the, on, the, on the master slave architecture. 
Here we have a master called Job Tracker. And here we have all the slaves uh, called uh, Dust Trackers. Each one of the Dust Tracker uh, has uh, several slots, which is like the unit of computation, where you can, uh, well, you can configure each of your nodes, depending if you, if you have a more powerful or a less powerful machine, you can put uh, more or less, less slots. And if each one of it, these slots can execute a map, can execute a reduce, OK? Um, so when you have your application, your map reduce that uh, you have code, what will happen behind is that it will be, uh, your code will be sent to the job tracker. The job tracker will distribute the, your code through the, to the task trackers. And they will do the map. And then we'll do, they will do the reduce. Um, have you seen something, I don't know, something wrong here? Well, actually, here we are executing the reduce, and just it may be just because uh, we're using just our application, but um, here um, uh, we're just using less than a half of our, of our cluster. We're like, uh, uh, the, our cluster has been underloaded just because uh, these, uh, these slots are evil. And that happens uh, also in, in if you if you execute not just one map reduce, if you execute many. This, for instance, is a graphic of a real life cluster executing maps. So the, the, the green one and the reduces are the yellow one. Uh, here you can see that well, more or less we can say that the balance between what well, you cannot see, but there's a red, there's a green here. Um, more or less, uh, the cluster is, is getting loaded well. But here, for instance, um, we have like many maps and not so many reduces, where we have some reduce previous slots. And here, we're no maps and just reduces. So we're, we're, uh, we're not using uh, any of the, of the reduce uh, uh, slots. That's one of the limitations of MapReduce, the 1.0. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, one of the limitations. Uh, another of the limitations is just because of the parting. Um, you are forced to, uh, to fit inside MapReduce. So for instance, you have two files. You, have to, you want to process something and something for each of the files. So you have to execute the MapReduce here and MapReduce here. Each one of the map reduces, uh, it ends to this, so you write down to this. And after uh, writing to this, you execute another map reduce, it reads again to the file, and writes to this. Maybe this intermediate data you don't want it. So in a way, you're wasting uh, this time. So that's because of the parting. Um, also, another kind of um, algorithm that you can program, like uh, iterative algorithms, if you want to, to a little connected component uh, algorithm or find the connected components of a graph, uh, you're doing an iterative algorithm. Uh, what you have to do is achieve the map reduce job, write to this, um, and then read again this data, write it down, read this data, write it down, until it gets you to some, to some condition that makes you stop. So that you're waiting down uh, many times, and maybe it's just, it's just one. Don't worry, you want to read. The guys I, at Yahoo uh, knew these problems, knew these limitations, and they developed uh, a next step on Hadoop, and they call it uh, Yarn. Yarn, uh, basically, what it does, it uh, separates um, MapReduce, the processing framework we explained in two parts. One is the resource manager. So what, that's the one that uh, manages the resources and knows what's happening with each, each machine. And then on top of that is the processing framework that it's just uh, how we how we execute the programs, how we, we, got, we go and, and execute it over YAR. Um, there's no job tracker. There's no task tracker. Uh, where there's no slots, 
we're simplifying that to cores and memory. Okay. Um, it also has uh, um, a master uh, slave architecture. Um, it has um, a master called uh, Rusus Manager. Um, and then the slaves that are the, called the node managers. What happens when, when you want to execute something in, in Yarn? Well, what, what will happen? It's uh, you, your application will, will ask some resources. And um, for instance, you, you, you can program a MapReduce that asks parallelism six. Each one of the maps and resources asks uh, one core and, and one gigabyte of RAM. What it will do, it will uh, create some, well, it, it will send the code to the resource manager. And this resource manager will create, not in the resource manager, but in the node manager, a master for this application. Okay. Yeah, it will take some resources, some minimal resources. But it this one will be like the, the old um, uh, job tracker. It will be responsible just for this job we're, we're executing right now. Um, then this application master will ask the resource manager uh, for the resources they, they need. And uh, the resource manager will give you some things called containers that basically are parts of the cluster, but not uh, in, in a way of just a slot, but parts of uh, core, cores and, and, and RAM. For instance, this way was, well, it's three co containers, they are called containers. Uh, each one of them uh, have one, one core and one gigabyte of RAM. It's, it's the, the, what, what, we, what we have asked. And then there are some other containers here uh, that have the same capacity, and they are all uh, linked to this application master. When we want to execute another job, uh, well, that's it. These containers um, are not limited just to maps or reduces, they execute things, it depends on the framework over it. So it can, they can execute map, reduce, or we'll see uh, something after, but they will kind of execute whatever you want. Um, when there's another application coming, um, maybe it's different, it, it, it has less parallelism, but it has, uh, it demands more resources, it asks, it can ask more resources, for instance, two cores per parallelism, for part of the parallelism, and two gigabytes per part. What will ask, what, 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 what it will do, it's uh, creating another application master, that will be here, and then doing the same thing as for the containers, and these containers will be bigger. So uh, what, what will can happen is that there's no uh, no space, no no normal normal free memory in your cluster. So maybe you have to wait, and uh, that's um, you can tune this. You can tune this. Uh, uh, well, you can tune. You can provide uh, a, a set of uh, queues. Well, they are called queues, um, and uh, you can. You can give uh, more or less weight to each of these queues. So, for instance, we can we have a, an ATL uh, an ATL queue with uh, a weight of two, and a query a query queue with a weight of one. This one uh, can, we can assign it to the ATL, and this one to the query. So, if the cluster is full and and there are some free slots there there. Uh, they're, uh, some, they're having some free slots and, and some other some queues are waiting for its jobs to execute. Uh, the ones with more weight will, will enter. It's more complicated than that, but more or less for giving you an idea of what you can do with that. Um, okay, what's, what else? Yeah. Um, one of the main benefits of, uh, of YARN is not just that we can take more advantage of the cluster, but we, we can uh, allow it to execute uh, different paradigms. So we, we still have MapReduce, we still have 
uh, our uh, processing framework that we were using before. But we also can execute, uh, well, that, that's mainly executing batch, batch processes, as Iker was saying before. Um, but we can also run Spark here for doing uh, in memory or streaming processes. We can have some uh, framework called Cloud Data Impala just for, uh, for querying over your HDFS data in an interactive way. And you can even program your, your own resource ma application master and, and, and make your own uh, application on the top of Yarn, even it's, if it's quite complicated. And I can really recommend it. Um, what else? Well, what was, what was happening before uh, that we were, um, uh, we were uh, because of the, of the paradigm, we were just thinking on MapReduce. What can happen right now is that we can be, do uh, MapReduce reduce in there are some paradigms like Spark that allow you to do that. So in a way, it's more efficient because you are not uh, going through disk. And uh, the, one of the good things is that you have the same cluster, the same cluster that you, you were executing uh, MapReduce. And if you had three, for instance, three MapReduce jobs, maybe what you can do is uh, uh, replacing one MapReduce job for, a, job for a Spark job. And it works in the same cluster you were executing MapReduce before. Or you can even replace two of them just for, for one Spark job. And that's quite important for maintaining all your infrastructure and and um, and executing everything on 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 the, on the same cluster. Uh, I'm sitting. I'm good in time. Okay. I I want to going to do some demo. Let's. doesn't want to go there. Okay. Maybe no. That's a joke. Uh, I actually have the command line here. <laughs> I cannot pass it through here. That's Do it afterwards and. So that's it. Um, I'm going <laughs> to explain you some things about what we're doing uh, 
uh, in our company, Trovix. Trovix is a search engine for classified ads, and uh, we are using these technologies like uh, for uh, four years or something like that. Um, we have uh, more than seventy MapReduce jobs like coded from for for us, uh, and we have a. Uh, a multi-tenant cluster that, that uses like more than 7,000 jobs per day. Um, this cluster, uh, what it does is um, generate uh, indexes for that, that create the content for our website. Um, we, we use it as a tool for providing business intelligence to the product owners to so they can tune uh, better their or make better decisions about uh, the business. Uh, we do it for mailing uh, our users and notifying that if there's something new uh, on our website. So we use it for, need for push notifications. And uh, if you are more interested, uh, there are some guys that will, will come after me that will explain, that you, explain you that. Uh, how we use Hadoop. Uh, for uh, online media buying, so I'm inviting you to, to stay here. Uh, what are the challenges we have? For, uh, well, we, we moved to Yarn like uh, six months ago or something like that, like that. So it's quite a challenge how to maintain all, all the code we have done, and, and, and it's quite well, it has some, some, some of the code ha have more than four years four years that, and uh, they run code that we coded when we didn't have experience of Hadoop, so it's quite uh, a challenge to maintain all that. We can try new paradigms, so when, as we, we are using Yarn, um, we are not just uh, uh, inside the map reviews, we can try like Spark or uh, Tez or something, another paradigm. And, um, Having Hadoop is, is quite problematic because well it has several files with well several XML files that you want to die when when you want to do touch something on on it and there's uh, there's always something to tune and make uh, make your your cluster go fast if you tune a, a bit your class your Hadoop configuration it can increase your and it, it can uh, it can increase the, the the performance on, on of your jobs. Um, we also do that analysis with SQL on Hadoop. Basically, uh, we have a tool called Hive that it allows you to program with SQL, and from behind it it uh, it creates well it, it compiles actually MapReduce and executes the data on HDFS, providing it providing you some some feedback of of, of, of your data the results of your data. Uh, as it's MapReduce is bad um, when when you when you code it when you code your SQLs and you launch them you can you can have your coffee and then you go back to to read your results and for sometimes for data data analysts that's that's quite quite fucked up. We also use um, Scoop on <coughs> my my well, Scoop for dumping data from from HDFS to my SQL. Uh, and some of the challenges we have is uh, using start using Impala um, that that prevents this the problem we have we have here. So we have an SQL interface that it's actually not that using MapReduce, but it's doing something that goes faster and it's interactive. You can code it, execute. You have the results. You can change a bit your your analysis. Execute and it's it's. Why? That data analysts, they, they are quite happy with having these kind of tools. And uh, we can try it um, uh, using Spark for, with uh, some of the machine learning libraries that <coughs> it has uh, inside, they are, and they are quite interesting. So it's quite a challenge to try if, if it fits in our business. Uh, also, we have uh, another cluster separated. Uh, that executes a storm for real-time processing, and um, it's still not not stable. 
but I have read somewhere that uh, it's storm on yarn. They are they are they are way, they are going to uh, to to integrate storm inside yarn. So they we could just get rid of our, our separated cluster or just join it to the Hadoop cluster and and um, scaling out the more or less nodes depending on 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 how fast we want to go. Um, there's the questions uh, slide, but I want to show you my demo. And if I don't get it, huh? Molt petita, eh? Ah, pot ser que sigui això. No. Sí. Es rata un parell. Ah, a veure si que és. És això. No sé si un quart ho pot dir, però... Quites per abajo, eh? No? No. Com se llama el monitor ese de... the price. <laughs> So we will log as Hadoop. So and um, we can read what's inside HDFS, for instance, Hadoop FS minus LS. No, no, because obviously uh, Hadoop is down and we have to start it. So we do a star uh, DFS dot SH. We're starting. <coughs> the master of HDFS, the slave of HDFS, and another uh, process called secondary, just that's a backup of, of the master. Uh, we start yarn, start yarn. Okay. We're starting the resource manager and starting the node manager. We also start Also start the uh, <coughs> previous history server. Uh, that's w where the MapReduce jobs are stored. If you want to uh, consult it, and uh, history server of Spark. And what we'll do is uh, execute a program called the MapReduce. It's a basic one, maybe, maybe all of you know it. It's called word count, and basically what it does, it gets a file, it counts how many appearances of each word there are, and it gives you uh, an output. That's the goal. So you have to do your, um, your boilerplate configuring your job, and saying what's happening behind, what's, what are your inputs and all this stuff. And then you execute your map and your reduce, reduce function. They are, that's your API. API. Reducer and mapper. And the way you create that you've seen before. Um, <coughs> what you'll do <coughs> is executing Hadoop, securing a jar. You see? You see? Uh, before, I'm going to. Explain it. I'm going to show you how it's cool. What's the yarn? Uh, 
So that's, yeah. The, um, the user interface is not really friendly. <coughs> but here you can see um, that we have three gigabytes of memory. We have uh, one node that runs a lot of hosts. Um, and it has this version of the group. Uh, when we run something, that is, uh, here, we, did, we do Hadoop jar. We provide the jar. It's inside the Baron here too. Baron here too. It's called JVC from jar with dependencies and rules. Yeah. Um, We'll tell which, uh, which is the class we are going to execute. It's com.jvtn.com.yarn.word count MapReduce. And we will get a file that I'm going to show you bef before executing that. <coughs> That's inside the GFS. Hadoop, FS, FS minus ls. Here there's a folder called Quixote, Quixote. And inside there's a file called Quixote.txt. Quixote that we can write text to do less. And actually it's it's the Quixote. We want to read and do a word count on that. So what we'll do going to give which is a file and I'll, an output. Okay? So when we execute it, it works, yeah. Doesn't so lucky today. It will <coughs> connect to Yarn and execute an application. It created an application master that we can go inside here. It's running your maps. Then it's it then reduces. And eventually it finishes. You can look counters on your jobs, like how many uh, files you read, how many files you write, uh, these kind of things. And uh, if you go to your output, it's here. You can see that there's two files. Um, there's two files because we we put the parallelism of two on our job, so it's one of the reduces writes down a uh, different file. Uh, uh, uh. And if, you, um, if we look inside of these files, we'll actually We'll see each word. Yeah, it's not clean and all that stuff because I didn't go the clean part. But you can see how, for each of the, the words, how many appearances it has. <coughs> Using the same, the same cluster, we're going to try to execute a, a spark <coughs> job. I called it here. here. Another job, like in Spark that basically does uh, uh, the same thing we, we did with MapReduce. It takes a file and, and it uses the same code in, uh, in the Spark paradigm. When we run it, it's here, called
we have to tell which is the class we're executing. It's class con dot jdpm con dot yarn dot port count spark. Uh, we we'll have to tell which is the jar that contains the, this code. It's in background. Background uh, and count target dependencies. Um, we have. We want to read the Quixote. Quixote. And we want to write it down to output Spark. We forgot something that we have to tell to Spark that connects to Yarn. So the master is Yarn last time. And it's something. Okay. Count with. So right now it's uh, starting and it's trying to connect uh, this application to the uh, node manager, resource manager, sorry. It will create an application master that here you can see that it's a Spark, so it's a Spark job. If it uses some resources, you can see it here. That's a Spark interface. It will execute things after a while because well uh, he gave it us he said he said that it has there are some kind of um, I don't know how would you say it, but uh, so if you want to do some easy things with uh, Spark master use big data in general um, the time for uh, starting all your your program it's uh, more than that what what you actually want to do and this case is, is a simple example well it executed uh, this job and here we can see the history that run that and you can see all the steps of spark and all those things but it run on, on the on top of, of yarn and uh, if you want to read a group that has minus ls you want to read the output here We have also two parts because we also tell tell it to have uh, two uh, two parallels. Uh, if we read the content, the format will maybe be a bit different, less, but the, the content is the same. So for each word. We having how many appearances it has uh, on the file. And actually, I did the demo. <laughs> I'm surprised. So, if you have questions, yeah, yeah. You to know, um, you basically use one mapper and two reducers, two reducers, right? Yeah. And you got two outputs, two files. Yeah. And you get one output using different uh, reducers. Um, if you want one out, one file, one file. Well, if you want one file, you you have to tell one that you want one reduce. So you, when you configure your job, actually here, uh, here, you tell that um, you want partitions two, and these partitions get somewhere I don't remember. <laughs> but, well, actually, you you tell that you tell that yeah. Set reducer set reduce tasks partitions. So you tell that uh, you want to parallelism to <coughs> if you want one file, you tell parallelism one, and if one be a history computation, you will write just write one file. So if you okay. have big amount of data, like uh, you ha you have to write one zero byte or one zero byte of one zero byte of data, uh, it will cost you. Uh, Quite long to write it down to this. So basically, you would like to have the result in one file, and you need to apply a process after it to merge all the results from different files. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Once you're changing the name of the file, you have to apply it. Okay. Yeah. Also, is there any reason why you use the Scala for the Spark uh, implementation? Well, 
Mm, there are Spartacus thing when you're implementing that's Python Scala and Java. But I just chose Scala. Another question? Yeah? And how much work how much work is involved in moving to use yarn in the production system? Sorry? How much work is involved in switching to use yarn in production? How many how long did it take? What was it difficult? Ah it was difficult. Well it was more difficult uh, because before we were using uh, Hadoop uh, with Cloudera version 3 and we migrated to version 5 and that was more painful than actually migrating to Yarn. Yeah, it took some some time to read, read document, document yourself a lot to because you have actually things running in production and you don't want <laughs> that because of that uh, you, you won't have uh, any more weekend in your life, you know. So you have to read and be sure that You, you have to have a pre-production cluster to test all your things, the sampling of your data. Yeah, it's possible to do it. <laughs> Any other question? Well, if we're here and you want to ask me something, just just tell me. Let's finish it.